Empowering teams and individuals is kind of the cool thing to do these days, but it's not as easy as just saying, you're empowered. I remember reading David Marquet's awesome book, Turn the Ship Around, where he shifted all decision-making authority from himself as captain to the direct reports on his submarine, and the results were phenomenal. I wondered how he made it work. Around that same time, I had a boss who really wanted to give me a high level of autonomy in the work that I did and how I did it. And he mostly left me alone to do what I wanted, which felt great. But then as I was trying to make decisions, I was often missing important context that he had. And occasionally he would come in with a change in priorities without much explanation, which was pretty frustrating. In this episode, we're gonna look at two big ideas. The first is a more nuanced way to think about empowerment. And the second, a structured path for moving from less empowerment to more empowerment in particular situations. Please like, share, and subscribe to help spread these ideas. You may even wish to share this episode anonymously with a manager who might benefit from this way of thinking. You know who you are. We find Jurgen Apello's seven levels of delegation to be a really useful model for thinking about sharing power or authority. We'll link to his original article in the show notes, but here's a quick overview. When people think about delegation or about sharing authority, they tend to think about three extremes. It's my decision, it's your decision, or we have to agree on the decision. In the seven levels of delegation, those are three of the levels, but they're not actually the most useful ones. There's nuance in between that's much more practical for real world decision making. So here are the seven levels modeled from the perspective of the leader sharing power. Level one is tell. At level one, it's my decision. I'll tell you what I decided, but we're not really gonna discuss it. Level two is sell. At level two, it's still my decision, but I'm gonna try to bring you along. I'm going to answer your questions. I'm gonna try to create alignment. Level three is consult. Now it starts getting interesting. Declaring a decision to be at level three means I'm going to decide, but I'll consult you and take your input into account before I make a decision. Often in practice, this actually feels like deciding together, but with a clear tiebreaker so we don't get stuck. Level four is agree. At level four, there's no decision unless we agree on it. Level four means consensus, which is slow and sometimes leads to no decision at all. We try to avoid level four except in cases like working agreements, where we want everyone to own the agreement. Level five is advise. This is the mirror image of level three. Now it's your decision, and I'd like you to seek and consider my advice before making a decision. Again, like level three, level five in practice can feel like deciding together, but now you're the tiebreaker instead of me. Level six is inquire, the mirror image of level two. You decide, but I wanna be able to ask questions and be brought along with the decision. Then finally, level seven is delegate. It's totally your decision, and I'm giving up the right to expect you to explain the rationale behind the decision. When it comes to empowering teams and individuals, this model helps us in two ways. First, it gives us shared language to talk about how we're sharing authority, and it allows us to apply different levels for different kinds of decisions. Second, it gives leaders a way to think and talk about moving decisions from one level to another. If a decision is currently at, say, level three, I'm deciding with my employee's advice, but I wanna move it to level five where my employee decides with my input, I can ask myself, what keeps me from making this three into a five? And that's where the humanizing work three jobs of management model comes in. If I wanna move this from a three to a five, what additional clarity do they need? What capability do I need to help increase? What system improvements are needed here? We've talked at length about the three jobs model in past episodes, so we'll drop a link to more about the model in the show notes. We recently taught the seven levels of delegation model to a senior executive and her leadership team. We'll call her Vicky for the purposes of this example. The clarity of that model really resonated with the team, and for each decision they had to make, someone would chime in by asking Vicky, hey, what level are you at on this one? As we moved through the backlog of decisions that team was making, Vicky realized that she was usually at a level two or a three, but that she wished she could be at a five or a six more often. So we pulled up the three jobs of management model and asked, which of these would you need to focus on in order to move that decision from a three to a five? Each time, Vicky identified one or two focus areas from the model that would make her more comfortable. 
oh, if I created greater clarity on the strategy, then the team could totally own that decision out of five. Or if we had a better system for hiring, I would trust the team to own those hiring decisions out of five or maybe even a six. The three jobs model helped Vicky see that true empowerment wasn't just saying you're empowered and then fretting about whether they'd make a good decision or not. Instead, it gave her a clear path to create the conditions where she could feel great about empowering her team to make decisions, even better ones than she would make since they were closer to the work. After the session, she came up and, and shared that one benefit she was really excited about was that she could see an end state where if she kept doing this work, she would end up with much more time to do important strategic work she always tended to run out of time for when she had to be the final decision maker on everything. So if you really want to empower people, don't just do empowerment theater. Instead, think about what level of delegation you're comfortable with now and what would need to be true for you to move to a higher number. The three jobs management model then gives you a concrete way to think about how to create the conditions necessary to get good results from that empowerment. Over time, creating more clarity, increased capability, and better systems will lead to more empowered individuals and teams, and ultimately to better business outcomes. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I kind of hope Sam leaves that in. <laughs>